Hello again everyone and welcome back to Reddit Aliens. I'm John and as always thank you so much for being here. We've got a good topic for you today and a new one, so let's learn some stuff. Redditors who have had a gun pointed at them. How are you alive? Please remember to like, share, say hello, and subscribe. I was living in a rough neighborhood a couple of years ago. One evening I was walking to the local grocery store when I suddenly walked into this huge dude. I'm 195 centimeters and 90 kilograms, so I'm not a small person myself. Before I knew it, I was surrounded and dragged into an alley and had a gun pointed at me. One of the guys asked me to show an ID. At that point, I thought they were undercover cops, but they were all wearing balaclavas made me doubt that. I showed them my ID and they patted my shoulder, shook my hand and said they're sorry for getting the wrong guy. Then they left. Gangs were basically running that neighborhood and they were most likely looking for someone who owed them money and I must have looked just like that guy. It could have been very traumatic, but the fact that they apologized afterwards actually made me feel safe lol and I just shrugged it off. Still glad I'm not living there anymore though. Friend was given a 22 caliber handgun for his 8th grade graduation. He started waving it around. I said stop that. He said it isn't loaded and pulled the trigger. The bullet went through my hair, right above my right ear. Never spoke to that dumbass again. First time. Gave them everything in my pocket and didn't move until they jumped in their getaway car. They got less than $22, a check, pizza delivery before credit and debit cards were more common, my flip phone, wallet, had my debit card with $3 in the account, and driver's license. They were caught three days later when they tried to use my card to buy gas. The second time, I bullshitted my way out of it, told the guy my work equipment was specialized enough that they wouldn't be able to sell it and would just help the police catch them. The truck was lowjacked three times over because my company doesn't trust anyone, the phone has proprietary tracking software, and worked even when the phone was off or wiped, and they could take my wallet, but I had less than $10 in my account and both credit cards were maxed. Just let me keep my driver's license because it's such a PETA to replace it. Basically, I'm not worth the effort. Guy laughed at me and ran off. First time, armed robbery while at work years ago. He just wanted the money from the register, so no big deal there. Second time, I didn't even know a gun was pointed at me. Random shooting. I took a bullet to the back of the head while driving, alive due to sheer luck. My brother pointed a rifle at me, just fooling around. Aimed the gun down and slid the bolt. Found the gun was loaded. He threw up. I let the gun holder make the first moves. I didn't talk unless I was addressed first. I didn't move unless I was told to. I didn't try to run or leave until he left. And then I pissed myself. Years ago, first real job was in training as a forest ranger and came upon a large group of men right hunting stand by several dead deer. All were armed and as I exited the vehicle many of the guns were pointed in my direction. In training, I was not armed as they realized guns were lowered. I was alone, unarmed, outnumbered, and should have been writing summonses, but I was just glad to leave. Some parts of my country are just chaos. My dad was fixing this telecom tower like usual, and I would go with him every once in a while. But this time is different. It was like 11 p.m., and the area we went to is, you could say, above the law. So the tower is in a mansion, and we couldn't find anyone to tell them we're here, but you could access the tower, so my dad did anyway. After an hour, my dad was done and drove away. It was fine until he noticed three cars following us. He parks and a bunch of guys with guns walk out of their cars. My dad was chill, trying to give them the car key. It's the company car anyway. Then they saw the company's logo on the car and went, uh. Oh. It was a misunderstanding, and they were like, have a nice day. The person was playing around and thought the gun was unloaded. He pointed it at my head and was about to pull the trigger when my husband, who had been raised to learn that you never ever point a gun at anyone, grabbed it away from him. It turned out the gun was loaded. The person was an alcoholic and forgot that he had loaded the gun last time he got drunk. Well, being an alcoholic and a gun owner does present some problems. It's not impossible, but it's difficult. But you have to know better than to play with those guns when you're under the influence because you represent gun owners and then you make all of us look bad when you do dumb shit. About a year ago, my mom had me drop off a baby gift for her friend's son and his newborn as he lived nearby and my mom lives several hours away as I had been visiting. 
I pulled up and rang the doorbell. He lives in an affluent suburban area with no crime, and he answers the door with a Glock pointed at me. I was like, what the F? And had to explain who I was. He mentioned he wasn't sure why someone would knock on his door at 2 p.m. on a Sunday. I told my mom I'll pay for shipping, rather than drop off presents again for him. When I was 21, I had a friend from a rough neighborhood. She asked if I wanted to ride around with a friend before work. I said yes, then hopped into the blacked out Audi truck not knowing what I was getting myself into. He picks up friends, they're all speaking a language I don't speak, there's multiple guns in the car. I'm in unfamiliar areas while they're selling every drug you can think of. We pull up to a house and go inside and sit on the couch. They're all crushing up pills to snort and do coke, things I don't participate in. There's a girl who's about my age playing with the gun. She's sitting on the couch across from me. She's taking the magazine out, putting it back in, etc., and she points it at me. I tell her, don't point that shit at me. She laughs and says, you scared? I said, no, just don't point that at me. She keeps it pointed at me and pulls the trigger, then laughs. All I remember is hearing a click noise, but no bullet came out. She said there's no clip in it, but I said there could always be one in the chamber, don't play like that. My friend downplayed it and was like, that's just how they are, that's how they play. I told her I never wanted to be around her friends and distanced myself from her. I didn't make it to work and Ubered to my car. Not me, but my father. He drove taxis in New York. He picked my mom up from her shift in the hospital. Man jumps in the taxi out of nowhere, demanding for a ride. My dad says, sure, extra money, I guess. Guy gets irritated my dad isn't going fast enough. It's New York, what do you expect? My dad, who's 5'5 from the Bronx and has never been scared of anyone in his life, starts to tell the guy to shut up and chill. They start verbally arguing. Guy pulls out a gun at my dad's head. Guy stops. He said the only reason he didn't kill him is because my mother is very pregnant in the passenger seat and thought she was nice. Somehow my dad was able to finish the trip. After that, he decided to get a job at a cable company and moved states to a safer area for our family. Rest in peace, dad. Not from the gun, but cancer. My obviously ex-friend, about 21 years ago, thought it'd be funny to point his unloaded gun in my face as I walked out of my bedroom one morning after stopping by from visiting the gun range. As a joke, my roommate caught him off guard and proceeded to beat the ever-living shit out of him. He panicked and ran off when we called his brother, who was a deputy, and told him what the hell just happened. We never heard from him after that. Heard a rumor that he had a job with the TSA at one point. Both terrifying and not surprising given his personality. If you're going to point a weapon at someone and try to surprise them by that and somebody else sees you, you kind of deserve what you get and you got what you deserved, so. A car pulled around and the headlights made my dad get off my chest and scuttle back into the trailer. He had been sitting on me, me on a pile of my clothes he had thrown into the middle of the street and holding his gun to my head. He was going to kill me if I tried to go back inside, then kill my mother, then set the trailer on fire, then kill himself. He was very, very clear about all of those points. I wet myself. I'm still surprised that that is a thing. If that car hadn't scared him off of me, I wouldn't be writing this. That was a long time ago, and he's been dead for over a decade, but that was pretty terrifying, yeah. My dad was a psychopath with no capacity for human love or caring, except for himself, of course. He was awful. Stepbrother pointed an unloaded rifle at me once while we were cleaning them. I grabbed it off of him and beat the shit out of him with it. Maybe I didn't beat him well enough, as later he found out that he did the same thing to his cousin, with a shotgun this time. He spent a couple months in juvenile hall for that one, piece of shit. Then there was the time someone brought a loaded revolver over to my friend's house. He pointed it at everyone, everybody flipped out because duh, and he proceeded to say, don't worry it's broken as if that didn't make it 100 times worse, and then accidentally dropped it. He died after rolling his car, subsequently breaking his neck, and saving the world from one more stupid piece of shit. Effing oxygen thieves. Hmm. Quick story. I was sitting at the end of my friend's kitchen table when she and another friend were comparing holsters. My friend then went on to explain how her son, 18, had shot himself in the hand earlier in the week. She had put one of the chamber and didn't realize it fired her 45 at my direction. I remember dodging the barrel of the gun as she was waving it around, thinking I should get up and move, as she was smoking methamphetamine at the time. Well, horrible combination, I know. 
However, the next thing I knew, I literally saw the flash and the bullet exit the gun. I thought I was covered in blood and all I could hear was ringing. I could see my friends screaming and I could smell the gunpowder. The bullet had hit the water bottle that was in my hand and what I thought was blood was water all over me. I work well under pressure, so I turned up the stereo and opened the windows to calm everyone in the room down and then proceeded to think about how my mother would have killed me had I died. I picked up the bullet off the floor and it had looked like it went through ballistics gel. It hit the pull and spring water bottle that it was in my hand. Still don't know how I didn't die that day. Better friends. It doesn't take a narrator to tell you that you need a better quality of acquaintance or friend, so hopefully you've distanced yourself from all of those people, because they're going to end up killing someone, if not themselves, soon. For what it's worth, I finally understood what the survivors meant by it gets better nine years later. Think about that amount of time very carefully. Nine Christmases, all with various families of the girlfriends I had over that time. Crossing over into new personal decade, my 20s, the next four jobs taken for pay raises and life changes. Relatives that hadn't existed before have now unlocked humor. Spending my dad's final moments by his side and then being the rock my family needed to stand out during that time. Meeting and marrying a woman thought only to exist in rom-coms and wet dreams. What I could call 50 years later as the best year of my life, living with all the guys. Blah blah blah. The abridged version of my obligatory story. Nine years of literal life. So what changed? It gets better. Means you literally wake up one day along the comically endless line of emptiness and despair, like from a dream. Like I still remember having the vivid thoughts. Yes, but to actually walk up to the edge and tempt it for real? How could I take it so far from thought to action? I became aware of my previous self, not as me from before, but as a different person entirely. I could see it from the outside for the first time, and the haze was gone. I could see, and I saw a great man with a great life. It had gotten better long ago, and all that was waiting was just for me to notice it. Bonus phrase, it's okay to not be okay comes in here. I still take hours at a time to sit and be depressed, but just like the lawnmower you have to kick to get started, or the cord you have to set just right to charge your phone, I know it's just a quirk of the hardware I came with. It's part of my own human maintenance, setting the cord just right. That is to say, to lament in a healthy way is a skill like any other that is learned and perfected over time. I didn't mean for this to be so long, it's just that nobody had ever put the meaningless phrase into words that meant anything to the ones who needed to understand it the most. I'm glad you're effing here. It's better to fight in numbers, my guy. Grew up in East LA in the 90s. Got caught near the train tracks at night and had some cholo ride his bike up to me, got off and pulled a gun on me, asking me where I'm from, which is code for what gang or hood you're from to start shit. Now, I was long here Nirvana kid with patches on my backpack. Not only was I not from anywhere, I didn't exactly exude any sort of wealth either. I told him that I was just catching the bus up to my cousin's place up the street. He told me to give him all the money I had. I told him I didn't have any, and he pointed the gun to my head, told me to empty my pockets and take off my shoes, and looking for money. I really didn't have any money on me, but I realized that this was a kid. I was 16 and he was probably 14. He had something to prove, and he wanted my fear, so I gave it to him. I wasn't afraid because these kids act tough, but killing a person is a whole other thing. But if I projected that I don't know what he would have done, so why risk it? I begged him to not shoot, and pleaded that I'm not from anywhere and didn't have any money. He came to me wanting conflict and money and got neither, so he was going to leave with something, so I gave him my fake fear. He could go tell his friends about how he punked some older Nirvana kid and feel big about himself, and I don't give an F. I was alive. That's all that mattered. 